First, you get the money. Then, you get the power. Then, you get the women. Is what Tony Montana said in the 1983 gangster classic Scarface. But in astronomy, it's a bit different. In astronomy, first, you get the money. Then, you get a lithium battery. And that's sort of where it stops. But I am super stoked to receive this Apertura all night power supply. You've probably seen it over on Quiv the Lazy Geeks channel. Uh, he did a really good torture test with it. And I'm really interested in this thing because this is a departure from the old days. The old days of lead acid batteries, lugging around these heavy batteries with inverters and going out to the field. Uh, this is super convenient. Let's take a look at it. Check this out. It is really, really lightweight. It has fans for its built-in inverter. It has DC, it has USB, it has AC, it has every port you would ever need. USB, USB-C, direct DC ports. Uh, it's American plugs, so I've put some adapters on for the Australian plugs. Uh, it's 110 volt output. But most things these days have a switching power supply, so I think this is gonna work with everything I have. In fact, I think it's gonna work with everything I have in the observatory. So I'm gonna go plug it in and turn on the AC here. We see we're fully charged and ready to go. You can probably hear the fans have started making noise there. Can you hear that? Mmm, power supply ASMR. It is a really tidy unit. I get the impression that High Point Scientific is manufacturing these in Asia. Uh, really to the specifications of astronomers. It comes with a ridiculous amount of cables, but it's cables that you wouldn't get if you just bought any other power supply for any other application. There is every power supply converter adapter under the sun in this thing. So whatever kind of mount you're running or camera setup, I'm pretty sure all the cables are there. Um, however, it wouldn't be too much of a big deal if you had to just buy another cheap little cable. But the simple fact is this thing has been designed by astronomers for astronomers. And I believe High Point Scientific has worked out how to ship these things basically everywhere, including Australia, which is no mean feat. I am truly sorry that Pistol and Boo were not declared. Protecting Australia is important. They have really strict rules about lithium batteries on planes for obvious reasons. You don't want to take down a plane just because you have a dicky battery from some cheap Chinese factory. So they've done a stack of paperwork and quality control to make sure that this complies with all international laws and they can get this battery to you basically wherever you are at this point. This is not a sponsored video, but they have given me this, so thank you High Point Scientific. I definitely looked at the other options, including the Celestron power tanks and things like that, but nothing was as versatile as this is for not just astronomy, but everything. I'm gonna do way more than astronomy on this. I'm gonna use this camping, I'm gonna use this busking. You know those mobile phone battery chargers that you take to music festivals? Imagine rocking up to Coachella with this bad boy. I would surely be the coolest dude at Coachella. Hello darkness, my old friend. All right, let's go play. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you're watching Star Stuff. <laughs> Zach, we're recording. Shush. <laughs> now, the Apertura power bank is obviously good for astronomy, but because of the diversity of ports on the thing, it's really good for anything. And uh, I've been really tempted to try this out. So, little proof of concept, guitar amp, guitar effects, and we're plugged into no wall here. We're just out raw dogging it. Okay, I'm in the observatory. Behold, my legendary cable management skills. Now, in order to test this thing, I think what I'll do is turn off the dehumidifier, which is sort of buzzy and weird anyway, but, but it also doesn't represent a real world test. I wouldn't have the dehumidifier running in here, or I don't need to anyway, um, under most circumstances. So I'll just prop the power supply up here. Now, if you do get this power supply from basically anywhere except the USA or Canada, you do want to make sure that your 240 volt appliances aren't going to freak out. 
The best way to do that is to check the switching power supply boxes. So most things have a little power brick like this and you want to read in there where it's got the input voltage and here it reads input 100 to 240 which means it will tolerate the 110 volts coming in from this inverter. But instead of just throwing everything on all at once, I have two power banks here. I'm going to throw the first one on, give it some AC, and I can hear everything powering up. Mounts on. Now I'll power up the mini PC. So far so good, but I think I can do better. Let's put everything on this thing. You know, Q have tested the all night capability with a pretty cut down rig, though he did put a dew heater on, um, really simulated that real world condition. This is not a real world condition. I'm testing load now. I wanna see if this little thing can control the whole observatory, which would be amazing. All right. It beeped. Everything's on. I like this little red screen too. It's kind of very astro themed and pretty inoffensive, but it's telling me here, I'm not sure if you can see that with the light, but it's telling me that there is 110 volts, 33 watts. I don't even know what that means. Okay, so it's taking load. It's still at 100%. Yep. My entire observatory is currently being powered by that. That's actually incredible. Um, all right, I'm gonna go inside and run some tests. Okay, I'm a little bit blown away. <laughs> I did not expect that to work. Actually, I'd scripted another whole intro to this in the event that it didn't work, but it did. I thought about testing things one at a time to see if it would handle the load. But in the end, I'm super lazy as you know, so I just plugged it all in. And this is my imaging PC. Uh, so this is a remote connection to the observatory. That's the security cameras. Everything is working. There's no actual rain in the forecast for a little while. Let's open it up. Filter wheel connected, telescope connected, focuser connected, camera connected, guider connected, home connected. All right, open sesame. Let's give it a spin. That is turkey. Okay, high point, I'm listening. <laughs> okay, um, let's do a, a flat run. Okay, it's going through the uh, flat wizard, but I think after this, what I'll do is just let it just keep exposing for, I don't know, maybe an hour. It's still a 97%. One hour later. Okay, it's been over an hour now. We're sitting on 87%. It's showing the, what is that? The wattage, which is 0 0.5 amps, I think. So that was a pretty good hour test. To replicate the all night experience though, I did do that full dome rotation, which is what you would expect of a night of imaging. Uh, opened and closed the shutter. Um, it's recharging as well. All the security cameras are running. All the network is running, everything. Everything, the only thing I turned off was the dehumidifier because it's not something that I need to run during an image session. I would say that this is a hugely successful test, but there is one more I want to do. Can we charge a Tesla with this? This is so stupid. Yeah, it does say it's rated for 110 in like three point font. Okay, the answer is no. A Tesla requires um, at least five amps or more. The actual error message I get says outlet grounding. Try a different outlet. Weirdly though, it's a grounding error and not an ampage error. Anyway, don't charge your Tesla with this thing, but power your observatory or your next trip in the field. The links for this product will be down in the description below. They ship anywhere in the world, as far as I know. The price fluctuates because of inflation right now, but last time I checked, it was about 560 US. Uh, but don't quote me on those numbers because they do fluctuate wildly with currency conversions and the economy, am I right? Anyway, I'm sorry if I look like a huge <laughs> talking about the economy while I'm sitting in my Tesla, but you've been watching Star Stuff. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. <laughs>